Hi everyone, welcome to our special Tuesday edition of Make, Do, and Mend. This week's episode is all about converting your two-ply mask into something that can accommodate a third layer uh, in a filter material. The filter material that we're going to be using today is something that you probably have around your house, which is one of these non-woven um, melt, they, they're called melt blown, I guess, polyester shopping bags or synthetic material shopping bags that has this kind of like pressed waffle material um, that is still breathable but it doesn't allow as many sort of particles, I guess, to pass through it. So this is something that World Health Organization and the CDC are recommending that we use um, as an extra layer of protection in our masks. And uh, I've been making a bunch of these. They're super easy to make. Um, and then you can put them inside of masks that already have a filter pocket. But I'm also going to show you how to convert a mask that doesn't have a filter pocket so that um, you can put one of these inside. So I'll show you how to make these and I'll show you how to do the conversion to a mask. This has become sort of my favorite style of mask lately. It's the clamshell style. And as you can see on the inside here, it goes all the way through between the lining and the exterior fabric. So it's really easy to put a filter into one of these. Um, it basically just nests inside of the two layers and then you can take it out to wash it. You can take it out to replace it because um, you don't want to wash these on hot and you don't want to put them in the dryer but these you can wash on hot and you can put in the dryer because they're just made of cotton. So it's really nice having the ability to take it out um, and replace this as it gets worn because this is gonna wear a little bit quicker than something like this because um, the, there's nothing like really holding it together. It's just this sort of thin non-woven material and if you've used these shopping bags before, then you know that they start to sort of tear and wear out or they get kind of like mushy. And if you've ever hit one of these with your iron, you know that they melt very, very quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do is to show you how to make one of these. And you'll need the mask that you'll be working from. And I'm gonna flip over so that you can see my workspace here. So you can see I've already traced traced out um, the one that I'm going to be working on today. And basically this is my mask pattern for the masks that I make. And this is my mask lining or my filter. So it's quite a bit smaller all the way around because it's not going to have any of the seam allowances other than the center seam. So the center part's pretty much the same. And then the sides and the top and bottom are quite a bit smaller because it's gonna be fitting inside. So you just wanna trace it onto two layers of the fabric. You can also buy this fabric by the yard if you don't have any of these um, shopping bags kicking around. It's usually labeled as spun bond in um, fabric stores, so you know what you're looking for. Make sure it's cut apart um, at the middle there because you want to be able to press these seams open. So I'll bring you over here to the sewing machine. Take it 
so that you can see what I'm doing. And it's just gonna be a straight stitch to start. Starting, so you're just, we're connecting these two pieces along this seam. And you want like just maybe a little bit narrower than a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And you can just hold these two layers together. You don't really need to pin them, but you do want to back stitch at the beginning. And just follow that curve really carefully. And then back stitch again at the end. And then to prevent these, um, sorry, I'll show you here. Um, prevent this seam from sort of sticking up. We're gonna press it open just using our thumbs. Some nails are very helpful if you have them because you can kind of scratch it down. Because as I said, you don't want to iron this fabric. It will melt. Um, if you have your iron at a very, very low setting, like acrylic, you could very, very gently iron, but it's not really going to take any creases out because uh, it just isn't hot enough to get that sort of burnished down. And then we're gonna zigzag this down as well. So I'll set my machine to, the widest zigzag that I can do is seven millimeters, but even if you could only do like four or five millimeters wide on your machine, and then my stitch length is at two millimeters. And starting with the needle over one side of the center seam so that it's gonna zigzag right over that seam. And you need to do this pretty slowly because you're going into this kind of divot of the, the mask. Um, and you don't wanna force it over that curve. So keep your fingers out of the way, but try to keep the fabric flat as it's going under the presser fit. to do to make a reusable filter. So it's really, really simple. Um, just trim your threads with your handy sewing scissors. And that's gonna fit right inside of this mask, right into this pocket here. So to feed it in, you just sort of shove it in the one side as far as it can go. And then reach through the other side to pull it the rest of the way through. Um, I can upload the image of the pattern um, that I used just so that you have sort of an idea of the scale. Um, but what I would suggest is using a mask that you know fits you really well and then just using um, 
the templates that I have as sort of a guide for the proportions of the difference between the filter and the mask itself. So now as you see, it fits right inside. It helps the mask keep its shape. Um, and it's something that offers a little bit more protection to you as the wearer of a mask, um, as well as to others who could be exposed to the virus through you. So that's like a super, super simple conversion or um, creation of the filter. But if you don't have a mask that already has this filter pocket, that's what I'll show you how to do next. I've already given this one a bit of a head start um, because the thing that's gonna take the longest on this is the unpicking of the seams. So it um, was basically sewn all the way around with an elastic casing on each side, but both sides were closed together. So there was no access to the lining to put in a filter. So on this side, I've opened up the seam here um, along the top and bottom edge. There was some top stitching as well as the seam holding the two pieces together. And then I've unpicked the casing and the seam. So I'm going to continue that on this side. And it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing here because the thread is such a good match. <laughs> um, but I'll be doing the re-sewing in a white thread. So hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit better. What I'm doing. This was the only mask that I had in this style um, where it didn't have a filter pocket. I've seen some people making filters out of coffee filters, um, but I feel like coffee a coffee filter's job is to let moisture pass through. So I'm not too sure how much more effective um, just a coffee filter is as an interlining in a mask. But what I do think a coffee filter would be really good for is um, condensation between your face and the mask. Because um, I know from walking outside on winter days, quite a lot of condensation starts to build up on the inside of the mask. So either a coffee filter or just like a tissue, I think would be really helpful for um, the condensation between your skin and the mask itself. Almost done unpicking the seam and then it's just a little bit of the top stitching that needs to get unpicked. You want to be careful doing this because you don't want to rip the fabric at all because all the fabric that's in here is all going to get uh, reused in this um, conversion. Like it's only a little bit that's going to get trimmed off. So you don't want to pull the threads really hard because you could rip the fabric uh, where the stitching was. So you can see here I've unpicked to about here on that top stitching and I'm going to do the same on the top. If you go a little too far, that's okay, but you don't want to go too narrow because you have to fold this in on itself to make the hem on the lining and the casing on the exterior fabric. I'll show you what I mean by that on my finished example. I'm 
This is like a tricky thread that's so similar in color. <laughs> So I think that's as far as I need to go on that and just get all my loose threads out of the way and trim down because we don't need them. And I'll show you what, I, what I'm referring to. So this is what's going to happen with the lining piece. It's going to get folded over two times at one quarter of an inch and then sewn down and these layers will get re-sewn together and then this piece here that's a flap here is going to become a nice open little casing for the elastic to go through so the next step is some ironing. So I'll take you over here. And my iron is very hot. And there's lots of cords in the way, so I have to step very carefully over the cords to um, get to my iron from my iron to my sewing machine and back again but it's all right okay so i'm gonna keep these edges as they are folded in like this um the top and bottom edges i to get this out of the way i don't have any pattern weights um I'm going to press this seam open. There we go. And do the same thing on this side. Press this seam open. Take the top out of the way. Also going to do the same thing on the exterior fabric. It'll be easier to work with with these pressed open, uh, even though we're going to be folding them closed again in a minute. All of the fold lines are slightly different from the original fold lines. So we don't want the um, fabric to sort of try to follow those previous lines. We wanna to try to sort of work, work those out so that um, it's just easier to handle. There's going to be a couple tricky spots, especially at the corners, where it's going to want to kind of fold back on itself. So just be careful. I mean, always be careful when you're ironing. That's good advice. Okay, and one of these I've already trimmed down the inside, um, but I think I need to trim it down a little bit more uh, so you can see this side's a little bit shorter than this one. So I'm going to trim them both down 
a little bit more because we need our inside piece to be smaller than our outside piece. So there's room for the casing. So I grab my scissors and I'm just trimming the lining piece. So I'm gonna fold my exterior fabric out of the way. And trim off that lining. I'm gonna go a little bit further, I think, than I just did. And I'm gonna compare it to the other side so I know how much more off this side that I have to trim. Got a little bit curved, but I want it to be nice and straight, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. Okay, and the next step is to trim this a quarter of an inch and then another about three eighths of an inch. And then sew it right along this inside edge here. Just turn it back over to the machine carefully step over my many cords. And go back to a straight stitch. And position it so that my needle is going to come down right along that edge. Back stitch. And then we need to get these two edges reattached before we make the casing on the outside because we won't be able to get to them again once the casing is made. So I'm just trimming my threads here and then going, just doing a top stitch. here to wherever the um, stitch line was before, a little bit over so that it's secure. So now the top edge is done there, I'm gonna just trim my threads, and I'm going to repeat the same thing on the bottom edge. You can see the pocket is starting to take shape here. Just getting my threads clipped. I try to clip my threads as I go so that I don't end up with a bunch of clipping at the end and I don't end up with threads caught in spots that makes them harder to clip. OK, 
Okay. So the first or the last step is to create this casing for the elastic to go through. So the first fold is like very narrow, eighth of an inch, and then press. And then a second fold, as far as you can go without overlapping the lining. Um, so it might be a quarter of an inch, it might be three eighths of an inch. You do want at least a quarter of an inch, depending on how wide your elastic is. I have one eighth inch elastic um, for this particular mask. So I have a lot of wiggle room on a quarter inch casing. Um, but if you have a wider elastic, then you need to cut your lining a little bit more so that there's more room for the casing on your exterior fabric. So over here. And so that last step, one more climb over the iron cord. I'm kind of sewing in a corner, so I don't have a lot of wiggle room. And again, stitching as close to that edge, that inner edge as possible, so that you have a nice wide casing, but you're not overlapping the lining piece. Because if you overlapped the lining, then you're closing it off and you're undoing uh, that pocket that we made. Just keep it as close to the edge as you can. And then give it a good back stitch at the end to secure it. And the only thing left to do is to feed the elastic through here with a safety pin. So I'll trim off these threads. And grab the safety pin. Grab the elastic. And it's a little tricky because the casing is so narrow, but you just have to get the sort of safety pin in and then not open the safety pin while you're feeding it through. You can shove it in. A little bit if you need you could use like the tip of a paintbrush or a little wooden dowel or something but usually with enough finagling it'll go through and ta-da and then you just need to tie off your elastic. Um, I like to just keep mine tied so that I can adjust it. Um, Cause I find that if, um, if I'm having a day where I sort of feel a bit bloated, then I need to loosen the elastic or if it just starts to feel tight um, or if I need it really, really secure against my face, depending on what it is that I'm doing. But there you go, super easy conversion from a two-ply mask to a mask that has a filter pocket where you can put in a reusable non-woven filter of your choosing. Um, obviously, 
repeat the same steps on this side, um, but I'm just going to show you the one side for the demo. And uh, yeah, it's good to go. It'll be nice and secure. It'll stand up to washing. Um, I wash all my masks on hot and I dry them in the dryer. I know you can hang them to dry or do whatever's your preference. Uh, that's just a super easy way to convert some masks that you might already have into something that's got that extra layer of protection. All right, everybody, take care. Thanks for tuning in.